Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. Firstly, I know I sound a little bit different than usual, I just wanted to address this. I'm a little bit sick, it's nothing serious and right now I'm feeling really good so don't worry about that. I just wanted to say it in case you were wondering why I sound a little bit different than usual. Today we are creating my weekly spreads for April. If you didn't see my April plan with me video yet, I will link it in the description and in the cards above. So my theme for April was picnic and I used watercolors for that. So I obviously continued with watercolors for my weeklies as well. Throughout setting up my April setup, I've been a little bit more in this experimental mood and I definitely felt the same when I was making my weeklies. Uh, in my April setup, I made a lot of these kind of similar looking spreads where I painted these small paintings related to picnic and food. And I definitely wanted to continue it here, but I wanted to make something a little bit different because I didn't want all of my pages to look the exact same. So for my first weekly spread for April, I chose to paint this big produce bag or grocery bag, this knitted type of bag, if you know what I mean. And I painted some oranges and a lemon inside of that. So my paintings for April have been pretty small, so I decided to just take the skill and make it a lot bigger for my first weekly. So I ended up painting the whole painting on the lower left corner and I made it a lot bigger than in my other spreads. Like always in this setup, I was using this 005 gray Pigma Micron and I was making the outlines with that for all of my paintings. After that, I took my Van Gogh watercolors and just started painting all of the little elements in the painting. So firstly, I wanted to focus on the oranges, so I just take some orange color and some yellow and red and I just tried to mix them together and create this orange color. And I tried to make the right and bottom side of the oranges a little bit darker and leave the upper left side of the oranges a little bit lighter to create this more realistic look. I've noticed that I definitely give myself a lot of pressure when I'm working on my bullet journal themes or paintings, especially ones that I'm sharing on a video. So it has been hard to find the balance of having fun with what you are doing and still creating something that you really like. And I feel like in April I was kind of being able to find that balance better because I noticed that I didn't really care about if the weeklies or the paintings turn out like perfect. I was just like having fun and going with the flow and just enjoying the process of creating something a little bit different. And I also just like the fact that I didn't really spend that much time on my weeklies this time as you can see from the duration of this video. And that overthinker in me would love to make this video and say in this voiceover like, yeah, this didn't really turn out that nice or didn't turn out that perfect. But to be honest, I wasn't trying to make anything perfect. I was just doing something that I had fun with and created something that I kind of like. But I painted this little knitted bag with this brown color and obviously I painted the lemon yellow and well that's pretty much it for this painting. I was contemplating whether I wanted to add a little gingham printed like blanket underneath this painting but maybe at this moment I thought less is more. <laughs> After I was done with the painting, I started making the actual layout itself and if you watch my April plan with me video, you know that I like to use a lot of craft paper and some of this old book page looking paper. And I glued both of them in the upper right corner with my glue tape roller. I'm sorry, while I'm recording this voiceover, I can notice that the more I talk, the more my voice is going away. So I, I really hope you don't mind me just losing my voice uh, in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> but uh, for the actual layout, I made 
these double lines to kind of represent my boxes for each day and like I did with my other setup for these boxes and all the little lines I used my Muji brown gel pen so that was a little nice touch to not have so much black ink in this setup. This weekly spread is definitely on the simpler side so the last thing I did I was just writing the days of the week with my uh, Pigma Micron fine liners and yeah that is it for this weekly spread. I'm really happy with how it turned out even though I think it's a lot more simple but it also was a nice balance between not taking too much but still looking really nice. And now for the second weekly I'm working on in this video. So I wanted to try to make three completely different weekly spreads in this video because like I said, I didn't want to repeat myself way too much. So this weekly spread is more in the style of my uh, initial April setup. So I painted these small little picnic related paintings in the upper left corner and I did it in the exact same way as my other paintings. So I just took my 005 Pigma Micron in gray and made the outlines for all these items and then I just used watercolor to color in all of the little elements. So in this painting I added a picnic blanket, a picnic basket, some strawberries and a little napkin and then I added a bottle and a glass and a camera and I also added a book and some oranges by the way, all my used products are always listed in the description, but if there's something missing, you can always just write me a comment or a DM on Instagram and I will try to update you and also update the video. Like I said in my April plan with me video, uh, I'm not the hugest fan of April and I feel like this April is the perfect example of why I don't really like it. The weather is really unpredictable. It has been raining and snowing the whole April so far. It's also really icy outside so it's again really hard to go on walks because I feel like I'm falling all of the time. I also love the irony of having this spring-like picnic theme as my bullet journal theme for April while it's like hailing and snowing outside. <laughs> But it definitely hasn't been that bad of a month or the beginning of the month because I had my birthday, we had some fun playing with friends online and even though I've been sick, it hasn't been that bad. I've just been puzzling a lot. I watched this one video on YouTube and that just sparked the puzzle love in me again and I went and bought a bunch of puzzles and I've been working on them pretty much all day or at least every day. <laughs> and. Yeah, it has been so much fun and it has been a great way to just forget about everything else that's happening in the world. So that is always great. Something that I did with all of my watercolor paintings this month is after the painting was done, I took my Pigma gray brush pen and I just went over all of the little watercolor elements and I made a little drop shadow to all of them. It was such a small thing but I really think that brought the whole painting a little bit more alive and just, I don't know, maybe just cheered up the whole painting a little bit. But after I finished the painting for the spread, I did the same as with my last weekly. So I again took my graph paper and the old book page and just glued it on the corner of the spread. I haven't actually used this exact layout in a little while. I really love how it looks and I think it especially works with themes that have these smaller little elements. And it has six boxes for my dailies and also in the lower right corner it has a little section for notes. I also made all of the boxes have rounded edges and I glued a little piece of craft paper on the top where I wrote the date and the day of the week. This month I decided to use this typewriter font to write all of my headers and I just really like how it pairs with all the kind of neutral toned and cozy illustrations. And that is it for this weekly spread and now we can go to the last one. So like I said, I was definitely feeling experimental and a little bit lazy or shall I say, I just wanted to do something else. So I just wanted to make this last weekly spread pretty fast without having to work on any paintings. 
this is not something I usually do. This is only the second weekly spread that I'm ever making in my bullet journal that doesn't have any drawings or paintings. So again, for my decorations in this weekly spread, I took the craft paper and the old book page looking paper and just glued them on the upper right corner and lower left corner. I added a small calendar in the spread and next to it I just made this little section for any notes. And underneath I made my dailies, so I just wrote the days from Monday to Sunday and made a little box for each day. I have been loving drop shadows this month, so I added a little drop shadow to all of the boxes. By the way, if this spread looks familiar to you, I made a really similar weekly in my January setup. Uh, it was also a time when I didn't really feel like doing uh, detailed painting for my weekly and I also just didn't add any uh, paintings or drawings in that and I feel like the layout itself is kind of similar as well but it was really hard to come up with new layouts that didn't need any paintings so I just went with the familiar one and I think it turned out fine so it's okay. After I had done the little boxes, I noticed that the lower section of the page still looked a bit empty, so I ended up just writing the name of the month April there, and I also uh, ended up sticking these little rounded kind of stickers there next to it. They're actually from these bigger rectangle stickers, but I always just use my circle template and make these little circles and just cut them out, because I don't really own that much stationery or any stickers or anything like that. But this was a quick setup. I didn't really spend that much time on these weekly, so obviously this video isn't long either, but I really hope you enjoyed watching this. Now that the video is coming to an end, let's quickly flip through all these pages that we made in this video. But if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up and leave a brown emoji in the comments if you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!